so here we are back at it uh, a couple days later now I did just get parts come in I've got to open that up to see if that is going to be the right uh, jug and piston so let's take a look and it looks about right Oh, new spark plug. Gasket set. All right. One, two, three rings. Head looks nice. Okay. I'm going to turn on my heater, warm this metal up a little bit so my hands don't freeze. I guess that's the gasket disintegrating on the old one. For a second I thought it was a triple gasket. All right, first thing we're gonna do is let's uh, get these rings on the piston and then we'll put the piston on the bike. Got some eye protection. And when I look at the old piston, you can see all this striation here where the piston itself was rubbing against the sleeve in the head there there's another really good shot so you're going to sandwich there's two thinner rings you're going to sandwich the oiler ring now the oiler ring goes in first because there is a it's difficult to see but there's a lip on the inside of the ring So it sits down in, and the two thinner rings then go on the top and the bottom of that oiler ring in that same channel. Like so. There's two thin rings around the oiler ring. And the remaining two rings, one is a darker color, one's a silver color. The darker colored one goes in the center ring on the piston head. Finally your last ring on the top. Now you want to offset the the openings in the rings here. You don't want them all lined up like that. So spin it around 180 here. Now on this head there's an arrow. This points towards the uh, I'll call it the front of the motor but it'll sit like this. This will be the exhaust down here now to set this up I'm gonna put one of the retaining rings in first so one's ready to go so I can just slide into one retaining ring when it's on the motor to make my life a little easier now the trick to this that I have is you do have this little dimple and it's just big enough that you can hold the end of the retaining ring with a pair of needle nose pliers start one end and then use the needle nose pliers to push it down in and then it'll pop right in there all right so let's go slide this onto the motor. All right, I have all this rag down here so I don't drop anything in the lower case like a retaining ring. So we're gonna leave all of that in place while we get this piston head secured so that we don't have any accident. Slides in just like that. Now it's on. The arrow's pointing down towards the exhaust side. I need to put the other retaining ring in now. There we go. Piston head is on. Looking around though, I do have a bit of a project here. I gotta make sure these mating surfaces are clean enough for the head gasket to sit on and do a nice sealing job. And 
and there is gasket residue so I got to be real careful and clean up some gasket here real careful not to get it down in the motor Okay, everything came off in big fragments, so I'm happy with that. A couple of gaskets in the kit here, the black thinner gasket. Is the one that will go on the bottom of the head. There we go. And let's make sure we pull our timing chain up through the gasket. Had to tap it down with the rubber mallet. Let's put our two lower bolts back in here. And the other side of the timing chain guide just sits down in here. All right, here's my dilemma. I can't find the two bolts that would go in the bottom of that jug there. Aha! There's the bolts I was looking for. Now the head. Let's pause for a minute and clean up around here a little bit. So still laid out. So cleaning up a little bit. I'm not going to need that ring. I'll keep that as a spare. This is one of the two exhaust bolts. Uh, I think this is going to be an M6 fine thread. Yes, it is. I'm going to need to get another one of those or two. I have my bolts still in my timing chain cover, my timing chain tensioner, my handlebar bolts. These are for the body, for the body, for the body. Plastics for the body, for the body. This is the rack on the back. Valve cover, bolts in there. Valve cover, bolts in there. These two are the front of the body. Timing chain gear. So everything is still laid out nice. Pull out my new gaskets. And my new plug, because I'm going to put old stuff in the box. Just to try and keep things organized as best I can. I will say paper towels are really no substitute for shop towels when you're doing this because the paper towels can disintegrate. As opposed to the blue shop towels you used to see them, but this is what I have. So, what I want to look for here, I want to inspect this boot around the carb, looking for cracks that could lead to air leaks. I believe this one's going to be okay. I think I'm going to wire brush that a little bit to clean that up. I got a little bit of cleanup to do on the mating surface here. It really feels good, but I'm going to run a 
X-Acto blade over it just to be sure. Not gonna touch the valves until it's back on the motor. You know what, for doing this in the backyard, I'm saying that's fine. Okay, again, gasket. Yeah, this is a new one. It does kind of feel like a triple type scenario. It can go on only in one direction is what this looks like. Yes, because one of these larger holes lines up in the back with the one with the rubber uh, grommet that I almost lost into the lower part of the case. There is that. Now to get the head back on. And you'll also notice I've got all my alignment standoffs, however you want to call them, already in place. I go too far I'm gonna slip my timing chain back up through make sure I line up with the rubber guide Coming back together, this guide does stick up a little more than the other one towards the back of the motor that doesn't come out. This one you slip back in, that's right about, or exactly where it needs to be right there. Everything sat down nice. So we're gonna have to get to top dead center, get our timing chain back on. And we have a timing tensioner to put on here. We have a new gasket to go on here. And I think first I'm going to slide the head bolts down in, get a little tension on them before I set the timing. This head bolt, I flattened a couple of the uh, mm, little flattened here from something. I'm going to try and run this through a, a tap and die to straighten it out first. This is my father's tap and die set. Okay, <clears throat> cutting eight millimeter threads at one and a quarter. So nice having the right tools for the job. Much better. Put my two big head bolts down in the side here and start holding this together. Still working on getting this last head bolt to get down in there. You know what? Same thing. This one needs to have its threads cut again as well. So I really don't have a thread cutter that's the perfect size for this one. And really what I have is I have some aluminum from the last head still in those threads. I'm not happy with that, so I believe these bolts will be the same. I'm going to pull the top. 
timing chain cover off of my spare motor. So nice to have a spare motor. Let's see if one of these two will do what I need. There we go, it's the same bolt. It's nice and clean. All right. There we go. Back to my remaining head bolt. So you can see my problem. I can't fit past. I'm gonna give it a little whack. See if it can slip just a hair back into the motor enough for me to slide by. There we go. Head bolts are all sitting down in now. All right, now we're gonna tighten these in a kind of a diagonal pattern. Okay. All right. It's gonna be about time to do some timing. Uh, kind of playing around here. There is a F, which looks to be forward timing, and a T for top dead center. So I'm actually lined up on the T now. Uh, you know what would be nice? Nice, powerful work light. There it is, my top dead center mark. I would say we are good. We'll hit that with an impact, but first let's get our flywheel cover on. Okay, we are getting closer. Let's get the carburetor back on here. Now another piece we need to do, engine mount. Well, that's this guy. Closer and closer. Breathing tubes, breathing tubes. Yep. Carb cable, what do we have? Another breathing tube. tank back on. Before I go too far, I do want to see this crank over to make sure I haven't goofed anything. That sounds like a lot of resistance unless my battery's almost dead. All right, here's what I'm thinking. It's cranking, but it's cranking very slow, and I'm not wanting to push it because it's a brand new cylinder, and I want to make sure it gets broken in. I don't know if it's a weak battery or the oil is cold because it's sitting out here. So I am going to hook it up to the charger, touch it quick, see if it turns, and if that's the case, um, then we'll stop. Because I don't actually don't, I don't want to start it here in the shed in case something goes wrong and we have a big fire. So quick test, and then uh, we'll move forward. All right, 12 amp, positive, negative. That's my key. There's a lot of resistance in it turning. Where's the resistance? Thank you. 
Oh, she sees them in my headlamp. You like chasing the snow shadows? breath a little bit.